Good morning everybody. It's 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock is with Father Warner. Today we celebrate the memorial of Gonzalo Garcia. Our text today is from Matthew chapter 10 verses 17 to 22. I'm not going to read the text today um, but I'm going to give you a reflection based on the life of Saint Gonzalo Garcia. But before that I, uh, I'm thinking of my dear friend, the late father Larry Pereira. I've often shared about his life because he was a great influence in my life. Um, I knew him as a youth before I joined the seminary. I attended his camps. I, as a seminarian, worked very, very closely with him. Uh, I think we must have done almost about 30 or 40 camps as a seminarian with him over uh, the 10 years, uh, 8 years that I was a seminarian and then as a priest. and. Uh, then he was my parish priest in Mount Carmel's and always a jo jo jovial, very particular about liturgy, but had a very sharp mind. Uh, and he always said, uh, one of the things that he said, he, was, he said that Christianity is not for namby-pambies. I use that phrase very often. Christianity is not for namby-pambies. Now, this word has more than just a nice ring to it. Because I think the, the, when you say Christianity is not for namby-pambies, it conveys a a very hard-hitting truth yeah now it's very dangerous when we propagate personal devotions to Christ over the more tougher message of the gospel yeah um, I, I think we often pick and choose uh, more delicate topics uh, which are more acceptable to everybody rather than some very uh, hard truths of the gospel now let me give you an example and please I mu must say this don't get me wrong, I have no disregard for the Feast of the Sacred Heart of Jesus or for that matter any other devotion. I myself grew up with this devotion to the Sacred Heart and still have a devotion. But this devotion has always been portrayed as um, sweet, you know, uh, merciful and if I may dare say a devotion for Nambi Pambis. Like you know, sweetheart of Jesus, fountain of love and mercy and then after that we go home. Now. I have yet to hear on the Feast of the Sacred uh, Heart of Jesus, on that feast day, a homily that challenges us to follow the Lord's heart of justice, follow the Lord's heart of suffering in mission, or a homily that shows us how Jesus confronted evil. You see, some of the devotion to the Sacred Heart of Jesus has always been portrayed as sweet. Yeah very uh, like jelly you know wobbly and nice and sweet and yeah not something that's really tough now if we are to truly truly follow the heart and the mind of Jesus then the road is narrow the road is less trodden so the gospel of today is a fine example of what a Christian is called to perhaps in some parts of the world or some parts of our own country, we don't experience what is described in today's gospel. The flogging, the hatred, being put to death and the terror of having to flee your own home. But that means one of two things. Either we don't live in that part of the world where this happens or we don't go out in mission in our part of the world or our part of the world is very, very safe. Where we go to mission, we choose very safe places. Now the apostles did not even need a choice. When you look at the apostles, they were burning with passion for the Lord. Not only had they been given great authority, and we see that in today's gospel, they were also given the consequences of that authority. And none of those consequences that Jesus gives them seem to be very sweet or very pretty. Jesus gave them clearly what they were going to uh, expect. St. Gonzalo Garcia, whose feast we celebrate today, was a perfect reflection of today's gospel. He was born in the year 1556 in uh, the fortified city of Basin in the Portuguese quarter of India. If ever you go to Vasai, now it's called Vasai, but Basin, Bakaim in Portuguese, um, you would find there is still the remnant of the Basin fort there. And this is where uh, Gonzalo Garcia was born. His father was a Portuguese soldier and his mother was a native. They were called uh, Mestiz, a kind of a, a mixed race. And they were kind of looked down upon the children of a mixed race. 
Now, Gonzalo Garcia was tutored by the Jesuits at the Basin Fort and he wanted to become a missionary but was turned down because he was too young. You see, at the age of 15, and I want to highlight this because uh, today we can't make up our mind to get married even at the age of 30. In the past, by the age of 15, they felt called to, uh, to, to be devoted to God. By the age of 18, they were getting married. Life began. Um, they lived to see their children's children, as the scripture says. Anyway, so at the age of 15, Gonzalo Garcia accompanied a Jesuit priest all the way to Japan. Now, it is here that he learns Japanese on the voyage. So these were long distance voyages. Uh, you were left on a ship with a couple of people and this is where he took the opportunity to learn Japanese. And he, when he reached, he turned out to be a very, very popular catechist, especially among the younger locals. He is one of those priests, very often we think of St. John Bosco or Dominic Savio, uh, Maria Goretti as saints for the young. Uh, and then we see a rather older image of uh, Gonzalo Garcia. But remember that at 15 years, he was already interacting with uh, younger people. He worked for eight years in the Japanese mission fields with the Jesuits. He tried very hard to join the Jesuit order, but he was turned down because of his native origin. Uh, native children were not seen as worthy enough uh, for the high altar of the Eucharist. Now, having lost hope, he moved to a place <coughs> to move to a place called Alcao, and he went there as a merchant. Now, uh, though he, through all these business transactions that he had, he also came into a co uh, to contact with many. Uh, of the high-ranking members of the Japanese society, including uh, made contact with the emperor. But his dream of being a Jesuit remained unfulfilled. And so he moved to the Philippines and he worked with the Franciscans and he worked there with them as a lay brother. Again, um, because of his native origin, he was only taken in as a lay brother. But a few years later, he was accepted by them as a friar minor. He was then sent back to Japan and this time as a translator for a diplomatic delegation. Here uh, he continued to teach catechism. Remember his first love was to teach catechism to young people. Now the success of the Franciscans in many ways angered the Buddhist priests in Japan. They tried to get the king to expel the Franciscans but uh, the, the emperor, rather, uh, the emperor refused to, um, to expel them. However, all that was about to change because a Spanish treasure ship named the San Felipe was forced to land because of a storm. And the captain of that ship uh, mistakenly, erroneously told the local Japanese custom agent that the Franciscans had been sent by the Spanish king to influence the people to rebel against the emperor. Now, this lie was taken advantage of by the enemies of the Franciscans, especially the Buddhist monks. Um, when um, Taiko Sama heard the story, he was the uh, emperor at that time, he was very, very enraged and he ordered that all the missionaries in Japan be arrested and executed. Now, the Franciscans were therefore arrested on December the 8th in the year 1596 and they were all sentenced to death. The following February, 26 Christians were taken to a hill outside of Nagasaki and it was here that they were crucified. Gonzalo Garcia was the first to be crucified. Once the missionaries were nailed to the crosses, the soldiers then pierced each one of them through the heart with a spear. But upon seeing this, Christians who were there in the crowd broke through the guards and they used pieces of cloth to soak up the blood of these holy martyrs. An example of missionary sacrifice, Gonzalo Garcia was the first Indian to be declared a saint and been canonized on June 8th in 1862 by Pope Pius IX. He is the principal patron of the Diocese of Versailles and the second patron of the Archdiocese of Bombay. The church today, my dear friends, 
seems to have a certain disconnect because we are perhaps more inclined to rituals and devotions. In order to be on fire with the word of God, to be connected to his message and to reject, as I began this homily, with the Nambi style, Pambi style of Christianity requires all of us to be reconnected to the word of God in the sacred scriptures. You know, sadly we glibly pass on fake news via social media without verifying the truth behind it. But so often we are so afraid to speak the truth about the word of God. And perhaps that is our mission today on this memorial of Gonzalo Garcia. Pass on the good news and stop spreading the fake news. God bless you everybody and I hope you have a blessed day. Let me give you a blessing today. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the Lord bless you, keep you, guide you, guard you and protect you all through this day. Don't forget to like this video, to share it with your friends, to subscribe to our channel. And once again, I want to remind you that we will be having uh, a mission open to all here at St. Stephen's Church in Kambala Hill, led by uh, Deacon Ivan Fernandez. This will be from the 11th to the 16th of um, March. So we're giving you enough of time. You can, you're welcome to come for it. You can attend either the evening sessions if you're free or the morning sessions. And if we find that people are coming from a distance and just want to spend the whole day in prayer from morning to evening, we could also make some lunch arrangements for you. Um, um, also, please don't forget to spread the news, the good news, not the fake news, but spread some good news for us. There's a youth retreat here at St. Stephen's, a residential retreat for youth between the ages of 15 and 30. Uh, this retreat uh, costs 3,000 rupees. Uh, we have some fantastic preachers. We have Deacon Ivan, we have Father Clifton, um, we have Mendonca, Father Omar Fernandez. I myself will be there and um, we will have separate accommodation for the girls in Villa Teresa Convent. 15 girls we can accommodate there and the boys we will accommodate in our hall. It's a no frill retreat so please don't expect separate rooms. You're going to sleep uh, uh, in a hall and rough it out uh, for three days but it's the experience yeah, that we invite you to. So thank you everybody, have a blessed day and uh, thank you to our sponsors and donors, to the Love Joy Hope Foundation and to our ministry. Keep in touch with us and God bless you. Have a wonderful day.